Hi friends! Today we are going to talk about arcs. If you don't know what an arc is, it is an advanced reader copy, which basically means that a publisher or an author sends you a copy of the book that they want you to read and review prior to release date to kind of help give buzz and reviews for these books. I currently have about 16 different arcs, digital arcs from NetGalley that come out between like now and I think the later ones are more towards March, but because I have so many, I thought we would go over what I have coming and see if there's any that interest you guys that you would like to have either a reading vlog or a full review video for. Non-spoilery, of course. So let's share my screen and talk about arcs. There are a couple that I'm a little behind on, but we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to briefly go over them and move on. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So first we have Kisses and Croissants by Anna Sophia Johano. Just a guess. Um, this one is Delacorte Press. It released April 6th. Yes, I realize that means I am super behind on. It is Mia Genro has always known she's destined to be a professional ballerina. In fact, it's in her blood. According to family legend, her too many grades to count grandmother once danced for the Paris Opera and was painted by Degas himself. Her parents say it's just a fantasy, but to Mia, it's so much more than that. It's her fate. Mia is planning to spend a magical summer in France pursuing her dream, but as she pirouettes into Paris, she soon realizes it may be a bit more complicated than she hoped. For starters, there's her rival Audrey, who will stop at nothing to show her up. There's her ballet instructor, whose impossibly high standards push her to the breaking point. And then there's Louis, devastatingly, distractingly charming Louis. He's eager to show Mia his city, and Mia is more than happy to hop on his Vespa and wrap her arms around him as they pass the gleaming lights of the Eiffel Tower. Mia's summer was supposed to be about ballet, but there's a reason Paris is called the City of Love. Hey, all right. Kisses and croissants. Next, we have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is a Berkeley publishing group, and it its publish date was May 11th. Again, I am a little behind on a couple of these, um, but it's okay. Poppy and Alex. Alex and Poppy. They have nothing in common. She's a wild child. He wears khakis. She has insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay at home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share home from college many years ago, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York City, and he's in their small hometown. But every summer, for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until two years ago, when they ruined everything. They haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she was last truly happy, she knows, without a doubt, it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together. Lay everything on the table. Make it all right. Miraculously. He agrees. Now she has a week to fix everything. If only she can get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship. What could possibly go wrong? I also have Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. It is also Berkeley. Um, this one I will have read by the release date, which is July 20th, which I don't know if this video has gone up the day before or the day after that. But either way, I will have read this one already, but... Uh, if you don't know about this series in particular, I'll just give you a brief overview of that because it is on here, so we should talk about it. Um, the Bromance Book Club is a series that follows a group of men who are like actors, athletes, politicians, men who are a little bit higher up on the food chain, if you want to say, and they have problems with women. So they make a book club where they read what they call manuals that are actually romance novels, and they use those to help them with their problems in their life. 
Isn't It Bromantic is the fourth book in the series, and this one follows The Russian. Uh, it's kind of the book that everybody's been waiting for, uh, because The Russian is been truly comedic relief the entire time so I'm not sure it could be fantastic or it could be an absolute shit show so I definitely will be reading this one before release day but I wanted to just throw it in here also and then we have Holdout by Jeffrey Kluger this is a Penguin Group um, a Dutton imprint and the published date on that is August 3rd and it says, Wally Beckwith is a model astronaut. She graduated at the top of her class from the Naval Academy, had a successful career flying fighter jets, and has spent more than 300 days in space. So when she refuses to leave her post aboard the International Space Station following an accident that forces her fellow astronauts to evacuate, her American and Russian colleagues are mystified. For Wally, the matter at hand feels all too clear and terrifying for her to be worried about ruining her career. She is stuck in a race against time to save a part of the world that seems to have been forgotten, and also the life of a person she loves the most. She will go to any length necessary, using only the tools she has to accomplish what she knows is right. I think this is one that the publisher emailed me about. I don't do a lot of sci-fi, but it seemed very interesting to me. We then have Casadora by Romina Garber. This is the follow-up to Lobizona, which came out last year, that I read and enjoyed. This is a Wednesday books title. You know how I feel about my Wednesday books. And this one comes out August 17th. I don't want to read the synopsis on this one because, again, it is a sequel and I don't want to spoil the first book for any of you if you haven't read the first book. Um, but if you haven't and you would like to know what it's about, Lobizona follows Manu, who has lived her life kind of locked away in this apartment with her mother and a grandmother figure who is this lady that allows them to live with her. She's never been allowed to go to school. She's never really been allowed to do a whole lot of things. And it's because her mother says she is so different from everyone else. Though Manu knows that she should trust her mother, there's some things going on that she definitely questions. The book deals a lot with... Um, illegal immigrants and whether people can be illegal or whether people are people and how they're treated and also that has like the magic aspect of it and as you can tell from this cover that we're looking at that it deals with wolves I mean it's a whole thing but again I didn't want to read the synopsis of Casadora because that would probably spoil some things I don't know where the sequel is going because I also haven't read the synopsis for Casadora I just went off of my Lobizona knowledge and moved on with my life. We then have The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook. This is also a Berkeley title and the pup date on that is October 5th and it is when single mother Liv is commissioned to paint a mural in a 100 year old lighthouse on a remote Scottish island it's an opportunity to start over with her three daughters Luna, Sapphire, and Clover. When two of her daughters go missing she's frantic. She learns that the cave beneath the lighthouse was once a prison for women accused of witchcraft. The locals warn her about wildlings, supernatural beings who mimic human children, created by witches for revenge. Liv is told wildlings are dangerous and must be killed. 22 years later, Luna has been searching for her missing sisters and mother. When she receives a call about her youngest sister, Clover, she's initially ecstatic. Clover is the sister she remembers, except she's still seven years old, the age she was when she vanished. Luna is worried Clover is a wildling. Luna has few memories of her time on the island, but she'll have to return to find the truth of what happened to her family. But she doesn't realize just how much the truth will change her. If you don't know, one of my favorite books that I read this year has been House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. And this has like a very similar vibe to me. So I'm super excited to read this one. Next, we have All the Feels by Olivia Dade. This is an Avon and Harper Voyager publish. And the release date on this is October 26th. I have not read the synopsis for this because I found out that it was actually a sequel or like a sequel part to spoiler alert. And I haven't read that yet. So I guess I need to read spoiler alert and then read this. But if you don't know, these books feature basically Hollywood heartthrob hunks. I mean, look at him. And plus size heroines. So down for that. If you would like me to read both of those and review those, we definitely can. Let me know. 
Next, we have Bright Ruined Things by Samantha Coho. This is a Wednesday Books title, and its published date is October 26th. I read Samantha's debut last year and enjoyed it, but didn't love it. And so I'm interested to see how this one goes. Um, it is not a sequel, so we shall read on. The only life May has ever known is on the island, living on the charity of the wealthy Prosper family who control the island's magic and its spirits. May longs for magic of her own and to have a place among the Prosper family, where her best friend Coco will see her as an equal, and her crush Miles will finally see her. But tonight is first night, when the Prospers and their high society friends celebrate the Night Lord Prosper first harnessed the island's magic and started producing ether, a magic fuel source that has revolutionized the world. With everyone returning to the island, May finally has the chance to go after what she's always wanted. When the spirits start inexplicably dying, May realizes that things aren't what they seem, and Ibo, the reclusive, mysterious heir to the Prosper magic, may hold all the answers, including a secret about May's past. As May and her friends unravel the mysteries of the island and the Prosper's magic, May starts to question the truth of what her world was built on. In this YA fantasy, Samantha Coho wonderfully mixes magic and an atmospheric setting into a fantastically immersive world with characters you won't be able to forget. And I mean, look at that cover. We then have The Hawthorne School by Sylvie Perry. This is a Crooked Lane books. It is a mystery thriller. So branching out, y'all. And its release date is December 7th. Claudia Morgan is overwhelmed. She's a single parent trying the best she can, but her four-year-old son Henry is a handful for her and for his preschool. When Claudia hears about a school with an atypical teaching style near her Chicagoland home, she has to visit. The Hawthorne School is beautiful and has everything she dreams of for Henry. Time to play outside, music, and art. The head of the school, Zelma, will even let Claudia volunteer to cover the cost of tuition. The school is good for Henry. His behavioral problems disappear, and he comes home subdued instead of rageful. But there's something a bit off about the school. It's cold halls and its enigmatic headmistress. When Henry brings home stories of ceremonies in the woods and odd rules, Claudia's instincts tell her that something isn't quite right, and she begins to realize she's caught in a web of manipulations and power. The author's work as a psychotherapist with a focus on narcissistic manipulation and addictive power dynamics, guides this exploration of a young mother who wants to do the best for her child. Right? We then have If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kara Dietrich. This is a Wednesday books, and its pub date is December 7th. 18-year-olds Ruben Montes and Zach Knight are two members of the boy band Saturday, one of the biggest acts in America. Along with their bandmates Angel Fawn and John Braxton, the four are teen heartthrobs in front of the cameras and best friends backstage. But privately, cracks are starting to form. Their once easy report is straining under the pressures of fame, and Ruben confides in Zach that he's feeling smothered by management's pressure to stay in the closet. On a whirlwind tour through Europe with both an unrelenting schedule and minimal supervision, Ruben and Zach come to rely on each other more and more, and their already close friendship evolves into a romance. But when they decide they're ready to tell their fans and live freely, Zach and Ruben start to truly realize that they will never have the support of their management. How can they hold tight to each other when the whole world seems to want to come between them? I have read two Sophie Gonzalez this year that I have absolutely loved. So, your girl is excited. Next is When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. It is a Wednesday books title, and the pub date is January 4th of 2022. I have 2022 books in here. It's crazy. Um, I have read all of Emma Lord's work up to now, so I'm very excited. Casually hopping over to Goodreads because there wasn't a synopsis on NetGalley. Nothing will get in the way of Millie Price's dream to become a Broadway star. Not her lovable but super introverted dad, who after raising Millie alone doesn't want to watch her leave home to pursue her dream. Not her pesky and ongoing drama club rival Oliver, who is the very definition of simmering romantic tension. And not the Millie moods, the feelings of intense emotion that threaten to overwhelm, always at maddeningly inconvenient times. Millie needs an ally, and when a left-open browser brings Millie to her dad's embarrassingly moody live journal from 2003, Millie knows just what to do. She's going to find her mom. There's Steph, a still-aspiring stage actress and receptionist at a talent agency. There's Farah, a serial dance teacher who clearly doesn't have the two left feet Millie has. And Beth, the chipper and sweet stage enthusiast with an equally exuberant 15-year-old daughter, a possible sister. This is getting out of hand. 
but how can you find a new part of your life and expect it to fit into your old one without leaving any marks? And why is it that when you go looking for the past, it somehow keeps bringing you back to what you've had all along? Joyous, heartfelt, and brimming with emotion, when you get the chance as a novel about falling in love, making a mess, and learning to let go that will leave you happy, sobbing, and cheering all the way to the end. That is one thing that I have enjoyed about Emma's books in the past is that they both deal with um, the teenagers, but also their parents. So I feel like this book is definitely following in that same vein. We then have How to Love Your Neighbor by Sophie Sullivan, a St. Martin's Press release. And the pub date on that is January 18th. This one there actually isn't like a blurb for. How to Love Your Neighbor is a high concept enemies to lovers rom-com from sparkling romance author Sophie Sullivan. And that's all I have found. So I mean, if you're into enemies to lovers, which your girl is, you know, let me know. We'll add it to the list. Uh, this one I just got approved for today and I'm freaking the fuck out. Okay. Uh, Full Flight by Ashley Schumacher, Wednesday Books, release date February 22nd. If you don't know, in my mid-year book freakout tag, I talk about Amelia Unabridged, which is Ashley's previous book. Y'all. I'm, I'm so excited for this. Everyone else in the tiny town of Enfield, Texas calls fall football season. But for the 43 members of the Fighting Enfield Marching Band, it's contest season. And for new saxophonist Anna James, it's her first chance to prove herself as the great musician she's trying hard to be. When she's assigned a duet with mellophone player Weston Ryan, the boy her small-minded town thinks of as nothing but trouble, she's equal parts thrilled and intimidated. But as he helps her with the duet and she sees the smile he seems to have just for her, she can't help but feel like she's helping him with something too. When her strict parents find out she's been secretly seeing him and keep them apart, Anna and Weston learn what it truly means to fight for something they love. With the marching contest nearing and the two falling hard for one another, the unthinkable happens and Anna is left grappling for a way forward without Weston. I can tell you right now, this book's gonna fucking destroy me. I already know. I already know. I already know. This book's gonna destroy me. I don't care if y'all want it or not. This one, this one gonna have a reading vlog because it's gonna be 75% me crying my eyes out. Okay. Oh God, I'm so excited. This I got approved for that book today. It's what sparked the idea for this video. So oh, excited. Okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> The One True Me and You by Remy K. England, also a Wednesday Books title, and its release date is March 1st of 2022. It's crazy that I have arcs from that far away. I'm so excited. Life is great, y'all. Up-and-coming fanfic author Kaylee Beaumont is internally screaming at the chance to finally meet her fandom friends in real life and spend a weekend at Great Con. She also has a side quest for the weekend. Try out they them pronouns to see how it feels. Where more masculine presenting cosplay, kiss a girl for the first time. It's a lot. And Kay mostly wants to lie face down on the hotel floor, especially when her hometown bully, Miss North Carolina, shows up in the very same hotel. But there's this con sponsored publishing contest and the chance to meet her fandom idols. And then there's Tegan, pageant queen Tegan Miller. Miss Virginia has her eye on the much-needed prize of $25,000 scholarship awarded to the winner of the Miss Cosmic Teen USA pageant. She also has secrets. She loves the dresses but hates the tiaras. She's a giant nerd for everything great con. She's gay AF. If Teen can just keep herself wrapped up tight for one more weekend, she can claim the scholarship and go off to college out and proud. If she's caught, she could lose everything she's worked for. If her rival, Miss North Carolina, has anything to do with it, that's exactly how it'll go down. When Tegan and Kate bump into one another the first night, sparks fly. Their connection is intense, as is their shared enemy. If they're spotted, the safe space of the con will be shattered, and all their secrets will follow them home. Their risks are great, but could the reward of embracing their true selves be worth it? I'm so excited for this, y'all. So freaking excited for this. I think this one is going to be amazing. Those are all of the arcs that I currently have. Let me know in the comments below if there's any of these that you are particularly interested in. Again, if you would like to see like a reading vlog or just a review video for, let me know. If there's any that you would like me to see like bunch together and do like a full like reading vlog for more than one of them, whatever you guys think would be fun. 
I definitely, definitely want to do a reading vlog for full flight. It gonna hurt me. I can already tell you it's gonna hurt me. Like I can already, like I know, I know how <laughs> Amelia on a bridge hurt me, and I know that, that book's gonna hurt me. So I'm super excited. So comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below in the comments section. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.